Hey folks, this is Mr. Woodward. In this video, we're gonna move beyond a definition of force and some simple ideas about Newton's first law into actually drawing out what are called free body diagrams and understanding different kinds of forces. We're gonna look at seven common forces here. So um, let's take a look at our first, our first force, which is called weight or the force of gravity on an object. And the explanation is this, the force of gravity is the force at which the earth, moon, or other massively large object attracts another object towards itself. By definition, this is the weight of an object. So you can use the terms force of gravity and weight interchangeably. They are the same thing. All objects upon earth experience a force of gravity, which is directed downward towards the center of the earth. Downward is in quotes because if you, you know, live in the North Pole or the South Pole, Downward is just relative. Downward just means towards, towards the center of the earth. The force of gravity on earth is always equal to the weight of the object. So here is a picture of a guy who's jumping out of a helicopter, okay? And he would certainly be experiencing the force of gravity pulling him down, uh, which, which causes him to fall, right? So a free body diagram is a picture of all of the forces on an object. And the reason why it's free is because we, we take the, the body, which in this case is the skydiver, and we free him from his surroundings. So we do not draw the helicopter. We don't draw any birds in the sky. We don't include the clouds. We don't even include the air. But if we are going to free the object from its surroundings, we have to draw all the forces acting on the object um, due to those things that it's being freed from. And the common way that we do this is we will just draw um, like a dot, or you can actually draw uh, the object itself. So this dot represents the skydiver. And then forces are drawn with arrows uh, in the direction that the force is pushing or pulling on the object. So in this case, the skydiver experiences a downward force of gravity that I will abbreviate with F grav, okay? Let's keep going. Let's add another force. Number two, air resistance. Okay, let's take a look at air resistance. Air resistance is a special type of frictional force which acts upon objects as they travel through the air. The force of air resistance always opposes the motion of the object. It is most noticeable for objects which travel at high speeds, like a skydiver or a downhill skier or a car that's, tr that's driving really fast, or for objects with large surface areas, like a parachute or a flat piece of paper that's falling. Otherwise, this force is frequently ignored due to its, ne its negligible magnitude. So this skydiver, um, as the skydiver falls, like flattens out his body, moves parallel to the surface of the earth, and increases his surface area with respect to the air. So here is the skydiver again, and the skydiver still has the force of gravity pulling him down, but now there is this air resistance upwards, right? Pushing against his face and his chest, slowing him down. So now we've got two forces acting on the skydiver. Let's go to our third force, um, tension. So this was two, this was one. Let's go to force number three, tension. Tension is the force which is transmitted through a string, a rope, a wire, or a cable when it is pulled tight. The tensional force is always pointed in the direction of the string or cable and pulls equally on the objects on either end. So we're gonna focus on this box, which is hanging by a, you can't really tell, maybe it's a rope, maybe it's a cable, but I'm going to free the box from its surroundings. I'm gonna draw it here in the middle. And it is common to draw free body diagrams as either a dot or a box. And this box, of course, has gravity pulling it down, which is why it's hanging in the first place. But now it's got something supporting it called tension. Without the tension, the box would be in free fall. But the tension is upwards because the rope is pulling on the box. If it's difficult to identify the direction of the force, sometimes like imagine that you are the object, right? Imagine that you are the box and that you've got like a rope uh, attached to the top of your head. You would feel pulled upwards by the rope. 
Let's keep going. Number four, spring force. Spring force. Spring force is the force exerted by a stretched or compressed spring. The spring force is always pointed in the direction that would restore the spring back to its unstretched or uncompressed position, right? Springs always want to like return to their resting state. The magnitude of a spring force is dependent upon the elasticity of the spring, which is a coefficient called K, and upon the amount of compression or stretch of the spring, delta X, from its equilibrium position. We'll look at uh, an equation later um, for spring force, which relates those, which is the force of spring is equal to um, K times delta X. We'll look at, we'll look at that equation later. But, um, and actually people would commonly throw a negative in front of that to show that the direction of the force is opposite, whether it's stretched or compressed. But in this case, um, let's draw a free body diagram. Here's the box. Box is still being pulled down by gravity. And now instead of the box being held by a rope, it's being held by a spring that's being stretched. Okay. The spring would want to be unstretched. And so if the spring were to, were to like restore itself to its unstretched state, it would pull upwards. And so now we've got an upward spring force on that box. Let's keep going. The fifth common force is a normal force. The normal force is the support force exerted on an object which is in contact with another stable object, okay? So it's a support force and a contact force. The objects have to be touching each other. Like gravity is not a contact force, right? I don't have to be touching the earth in order to feel the earth's gravity, but this normal force is a contact force. For example, if a book is resting upon a surface, then the surface is exerting an upward force upon the book in order to support the weight of the book. On occasions, a normal force is exerted horizontally between two objects which are in contact with each other. Like if you took the book and you push it against the wall, now the wall would be exerting a horizontal force. Okay, um, by the way, uh, the word normal in geometry means perpendicular. So that, that's what's so normal about a normal force. The force acts perpendicular to the, to the contact surface. So here's our book. It's resting on a table, but I'm going to free the book from the table, right? I'm not going to draw the table. Instead, I will replace the force from the table on uh, the book. Okay, so the, first of all, if there was no table, the book would fall down because of the force of gravity. And hint, hint, you will always have the force of gravity on your objects. You'll notice that every single one of these examples has the force of gravity pulling down. So go ahead and include the force of gravity right away first thing every time. But now if I stopped here, it looks like the book is in free fall, but it's not because there's another force upwards from the table called a normal force. And I write that as F norm, okay? Again, what's normal about it? Well, here's the, here's the surface, right? And perpendicular to that surface is this way. This is the sort of right angle, the perpendicular angle from that surface. Number six, friction. The frictional force is the force exerted between surfaces as they slide or try to slide past each other. The friction force opposes the sliding motion of the object. For example, if a book moves rightward across the surface of a desk, then the desk exerts a leftward frictional force on the book. So now we've got the book again. It's still being pulled down by gravity. It's still being supported upwards by the table as a normal force. But now somebody, it looks like somebody has pushed the book and the book is in the process of sliding, right? The book isn't still being pushed. It was pushed and now it's sliding across the desk. So um, this is a tricky free body diagram because there was a time when somebody or something pushed the book to the right, but now they've stopped pushing it. So I'm not gonna draw that force. That force is no longer present. And now, as it slides to the right, it comes to a stop because there's friction resisting it. I'm going to call this F. Friction, right? Friction is from the rough surface of the table 
that's rubbing up against the bottom of the book, slowing it down. By the way, there are two types of friction that we will learn um, later. Um, and, and it said between surfaces as they slide, that's called kinetic friction. Or try to slide, that's called static friction. We'll learn about those later. Kinetic and static friction. Finally, number seven, um, a generic applied force. The applied force is a generic term for forces applied to an object by a person or another object. In reality, it may actually be a normal tension or friction force, but without enough information, the force may be labeled applied force. So the, the applied force is sometimes like a catch-all. I'm not sure what to call it, so I'm going to go with applied. But oftentimes, you can be more specific, right? You can say, no, it, specifically it's a normal force or a tension force or a friction force. So uh, here's an example. Um, a, a man is pushing a car. I'm going to draw the outline of the car just so that it's clear uh, which, which object I'm drawing. Um, right, so there, there's, there's two objects interacting here, the, the man and the car. If I just drew like a blob, you might be confused about whether I'm drawing the man or the car. But I'm drawing the car. We're going to draw the forces on the car. You could also draw the forces on the man. That would be a separate free body diagram. Okay, the car has gravity pulling it down. The car has a normal force from the road supporting it up, right? The car is also experiencing a push from the man, which I'm going to call an applied force in this case. You could also call it a normal force from the man because this is this plane right here is the contact between them. And you could say, man, that feels like a normal force this in this direction, right? Um, perpendicular to that, to that plane of contact would be fine as well. And then um, we're not told specifically about any kind of friction. Um, usually when objects are rolling, um, they don't experience uh, a noticeable amount of friction. We'll learn later about something called rolling friction, but it's so, so small that we're going to neglect it in this case and just stick with the normal force up, gravity down, and an applied force to the right. This would, of course, cause the car to move to the right. All right, so this is uh, an overview of seven common types of forces and how to draw free body diagrams.